Hello, this is Robert, and I wanted to talk to you about my bike. I had a friend on uh, YouTube ask me to talk about the Superhawk a little. So this is my bike. I've had it about five years. It's a 1998 Honda Superhawk. I'm its third owner. When I got it, it was just about in immaculate condition. I've since given it a bit of wear and tear. But uh, the Superhawk was Honda's answer to the Ducati threat in the uh, mid-90s when Ducati was dominating superbike racing. Uh, I got a bug on it. Forgive me, I didn't clean the bike beforehand, but Ducati had a dominance in superbike racing and uh, Honda came up with the RC51 uh, homologation special and then this a more streetable version of its uh, V-twin engine and the Superhawk is sporty it's sport inspired but it's uh, not as uh, flat out a performance machine as the uh, RC-51s were. Uh, you can see it has the familiar uh, side radiators that the uh, VFR V4s have. And it's a classic 90 degree V-twin. You can see the front cylinder fairly clearly hiding behind the front wheel there. God, I need to clean this poor bike. But I've done quite a few things to this since I bought it. Uh, it came with the tank bra, which I kind of like. Uh, it gives me something to hang on to and keeps my belt buckle from scarring the bike up. But uh, the bike was in near cherry condition when I got it. Uh, the original owner had put close to 25,000 miles on it, and the bike looked barely a year old. Uh, the second owner uh, didn't trust himself with it and sold it to me. And uh, I've wanted one of these ever since they came out, and so I was very happy to get one and find one uh, in as good a condition as this one was. So the bike weighs uh, roughly, I've heard all kinds of claims. Uh, I'm gonna say it weighs 450 pounds. Uh, uh, the Honda claimed uh, 90, no, pardon me, uh, 105 horsepower. Uh, the bike might make that now with the mods I've done to it, uh, uh, including the cans and uh, 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 Dynajet carb kit. Uh, it's, the original owner had done a lot of nice, tasty mods to it uh, before I got it. He put on the uh, braided brake lines, which the uh, VFRs badly need. Uh, uh, they are known for having notoriously spongy brakes. And even with the uh, lines, uh, the uh, braided lines, I cannot lock the brakes up on this bike on good traction pavement. I can't do a brakey. So this bike is pretty much pre-everything in the modern era. No ABS, uh, no uh, uh, rider traction modes, uh, no fuel injection. This bike has the largest carburetors Honda ever fitted to a street bike at the time. There's a pair of uh, 45, or pardon me, 48 millimeter downdraft carbs. 
there's the bottom of one in there and they live in the V. I guess you, they're technically downdrafts but they're uh, canned at like 45 degrees and they're they have a little mounting bridge there that uh, allows them to uh, let them live down there in the V between the cylinders. You can see the bike has a large air box under the tank as well. So uh, this is a mellower version of Honda's RC51. The RC51 had a much stiffer suspension, uh, fuel injection, uh, definitely a peakier tune than this bike. I think the RCs were rated at uh, 115, something like that, horsepower. Yeah. Uh, me personally, what I love about this bike is the, just the torque, uh, the sound of the engine and the torque it makes. It is just a uh, beautiful sounding machine, very mellow, easy going, very responsive to the throttle. Uh, if you're feeling lazy, there's absolutely no reason to downshift most of the time. You can just whack the throttle open. The bike will give a big bellow and take off. And uh, it's as fast as I need, at least in mo most sane traffic. So uh, some of the things I've done to it are, uh, let's see, uh, this is a uh, double bubble windshield, uh, zero gravity. Uh, I've got a uh, loud horn hidden down in there. Uh, these are uh, kilo bars here on the... Uh, which give you a little, uh, almost an uh, uh, inch rise over the stock bars. The stock bars are kind of odd. They have an odd angle to them, and uh, I never found them comfortable. Uh, the Gila bars I can pretty much ride all day as long as my butt lasts. Uh, you can see uh, the... Uh, the, uh, I installed a, a CBR uh, rear shock. Uh, it was done by a, a guy who uh, does suspension for Hondas. Uh, was it a Dotary Motorsports? It is really nice. Dotary, pardon me. And, uh, it's a great little kit. I mean, it did wonders for the bike. The bike already came. Uh, the original owner had put uh, race tech internals in the uh, forks, but they're too soft for my weight. And so I got a lot of brake dive. And uh, putting that shock on there really uh, smoothed things out. God, I should have cleaned the bike first. But uh, let's see, the, uh, the cans right now are two brothers. You can see the uh, logo there. I have them turned inside out, so hopefully they look a little more stock to uh, the casual viewer. These are the second set of pipes I had on the bike. The initial set were a uh, set of Leo Vinci's. And they, had, they were the older nozzle spigot types, and they would literally ring when the bike would decelerate. It, it would sound like uh, someone uh, rattling castanets in the tailpipe. So I got these, and presumably because of the cone, uh, they don't do it. But uh, they definitely... Uh, they don't have a, a nice deep bass tone like the Leo Vinci's had, but uh, they're still, uh, uh, they're 
plenty loud and sound, have a nice sound, pull some power out of the uh, bike. So uh, why don't we uh, fire it up and we'll see what it sounds like. So we're neutral, pull the choke. <laughs> Hopefully that came through nice and loud on the uh, microphone here. Uh, Superhawks have two major known faults. And one is kind of generic to all Hondas of that era, and that's the uh, rectifier regulator assembly. It's pretty dinky, uh, uses SCRs, runs red hot, and eventually cooks itself to death. Uh, the fix is just to get a modern MOSFET based uh, uh, rectifier regulator assembly. I'm using uh, a kit that uses the uh, Shindigen FH020, uh, which is a step up in every way. It's also oh, about a uh, third larger in size than the uh, the old unit and uh, it's probably the easiest mod I've done to this bike uh, in terms of uh, it wasn't quite plug and play but uh, it was fairly easy to redo the connectors the other issue <laughs> is one that has to deal with uh, the cam chain tensioners. Honda had come out with some automatic cam chain tensioners, which were a great idea for four-cylinder bikes. Uh, they were spring-loaded, had a little ratcheting mechanism, and uh, would keep the, chain, the cam chain tension quite uh, well maintained over a period of time. You didn't have to mess with them much. They work well on four cylinders with a smooth power delivery. They work rather poorly on large V-twins with a lumpy power delivery. And the uh, Superhawks uh, became notorious for uh, 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 losing cam chain tension and being an interference engine, eating the valve train. and. Uh, uh, it's very common for uh, guys to part their bikes out because they can make a lot of money selling the heads to some poor person who's uh, lunched theirs. The solution, of course, is to get a set of these, the uh, manual cam chain tensioners. These were made by a guy named Krieger. And uh, uh, they're available on eBay. Uh, there's another brand uh, that's even more famous, I believe. But uh, they work quite well. You just have to give the bike routine maintenance. So they're, uh, I mainly use this bike for uh, sport touring around the state. Uh, my average ride is about 100 miles on gently winding roads. I like, I've taken it uh, overnight camping, various campgrounds and so on. Had a blast doing it. We have a lot of nice roads up here in Washington since there are so many mountains. Uh, it currently has, uh, what is it? Uh, I believe 32,000 on it. When I bought it, it had 25,000 on it. But, uh, I've had one parking lot uh, tip over here, put a little bit of a dent in the uh, 
uh, scrape on the paint on the uh, uh, clutch cover there. Uh, these did a pretty good job. Uh, I had one other scrape on this side, and this did a magnificent job. Uh, all I lost was a turn signal stock, and so I got these. These are uh, protons. And uh, they're pretty cool. They do the flash, the seizure inducing flash. And then I got these guys just recently. So I wanted uh, something a little more streamlined. But the protons act as running lights as well. The bike also has the stock running light, which I'm probably going to pop an LED unit of some sort in it. But all around, uh, this is a fun bike. It's a wheelie monster. Uh, it's fairly good in the corners. Uh, like I said, uh, you can keep up with traffic uh, without any trouble at all. Uh, most of the time, I find it frustrating to ride in traffic because I'm always uh, I can't wind it out past about four grand or I'm into the bumper of the car in front of me. So I tend to just uh, take it straight out from the city and have a good ride out in the country. And I guess that's about it. Uh, any questions, uh, be glad to answer. See you later.